How's it going guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to do an update video on the Frankenstein Civic. So let's roll that intro and get into it. So I wasn't actually planning on making any videos, but uh, it's been a hot minute since we've uh, uploaded anything. I think it's almost been a year since we've uploaded anything on the channel. But I was inspired yesterday. Someone put this on my windshield and you know what? We got another subscriber. So thank you for subscribing. Uh, whoever you are, um, you inspired this video. So I'm going to go through a quick update on where the Frankenstein Civic is at. Um, I've been putting a lot of work into it. There's been a lot of frustration involved, but I uh, figured I'd let you guys know where it's at currently and uh, what we still need to do to get it on the road. So let's get to it. So this is how it is currently sitting. I have it mostly put back together. Um, bumper, I had to do a bit of modifying to make it fit because I do have a battery relocation behind the bumper here and it's actually not meant to be on the driver's side. It's actually supposed to be on the passenger side, but because of how my intercooler piping is routed, I could not mount it there. So I had to do some custom work on this side to make it fit. I don't know if we can see under here, but uh, yeah, right there is the battery. And uh, I had to do some custom work to get it mounted on this side, which actually pushed it quite a bit farther forward than it's supposed to be. So then I had to customize that bracket a bit more and uh, do some clearancing. So it is actually pretty tight. I think like, we are right solid up against that bracket, but at least I know that bumper is not going anywhere. Um, alignment, I still need to work a little bit more on. I had to redo some of the fasteners and the fenders to make it work. Um, I also want to do some fastening here because right now the there's no crash bar in the front, which is where that, uh, which is where the bumper would normally mount to and uh, that's no longer there. So I have to do something to make it a bit more rigid in the front so I can get the alignment under the headlights figured out and then uh, kind of close this gap in between the grill and the bumper. So that's cosmetic stuff. I don't care too much about cosmetics right now. I just want to get this thing running. So I'm going to pop the hood now and we'll get into what's in the engine bay. So where we left off last time, I was planning on taking this thing on its first drive, which I technically did. I did a lap around the block and uh, I was having nothing but fluid leaks. I was leaking engine oil, I was leaking trans fluid, I was leaking coolant, basically every fluid was leaking. So I had to put a lot of time and work into fixing all of those leaks. Um, as you can see now, we are clean under here. So I have successfully fixed all the leaks and uh, it was a big process, um, I know in the last video, I think I was working on the cam seals, which didn't work the first time. I ordered new seals again. So this is the third set of cam seals that are in there. These ones actually seal, so that is good. Um, I was leaking brake fluid from here because these hose clamps were not sealing properly. I ended up having to customize one of the flanges down here to make it work. So that's finally sealed. Uh, the transmission was leaking from the axle seals, so I replaced those, those are good. But no matter what I did, this thing was always leaking coolant. And because it was leaking from somewhere up top, it would drip over everything and it was very hard to diagnose where it was coming from. But I finally found out that it was from the thermostat housing. It wasn't properly sealing, so I took all that apart, I redid the gasket or the sealant, whatever I did in there. I think I ended up putting a bunch of RTV around the inside of it as well. And it is currently sealed. So um, I have run this thing quite a few times. I've got it up to temp, got it pressurized and uh, no coolant leaks yet. So um, I think we're finally good there. Then if you guys remember last time I had just an up pipe coming off of the turbo uh, for an exhaust and I was getting inaccurate readings uh, on the AFR gauge. So uh, I ended up bringing it to a shop. I finally got to the point where I didn't really have time to work on it anymore. So I brought it to a professional and uh, I got them to button up the rest of the wiring. And I just basically had them go over the car 100% to make sure everything was done right. 
Um, they ended up putting a full exhaust on it, so this is all custom done. They ended up having to move the rad fan to the front. I not sure how much of a fan I am of that because I did have problems at the track back in the day when I had a fan on the front with overheating. So I may still try to find a way to mount it back here. There isn't a whole lot of room, but I might be able to mount a small fan. At least I can get something on the inside there. So yeah, full exhaust. I got the guy to go over everything. He put a base map on it, did a proper tune on it. So it starts beautifully. It runs and idles beautifully it revs great but uh, now the problem i'm facing is when i drive it under load it runs way too lean so uh, i still need to get my buddy over here to do a road tune on the car um, his schedule and my schedule aren't exactly lining up uh, lately so trying to find a day that works for both of us has been tough so that's kind of what we're waiting on now but uh, yeah i can fire it up for you guys right now you can hear it run a bit uh, maybe rev it a couple times and uh yeah freaking spider webs in here it's only been like a couple days all right so i think i also want to mount the afr gauge differently uh or maybe even just mount my steering wheel straight because when i'm driving i can't really see the afrs it's kind of in a blind spot so in order to drive the car straight i do have to have the wheel like this so i'm thinking i'll have to redo that but I wouldn't mind having that gauge somewhere more in my face, so I might end up swapping it with my oil pressure gauge or something like that. Anyway, for now, let's fire this thing up. Well, it was running great. Now it seems like it's running way rich again. So that seems to be like an ongoing problem with this thing. As soon as I get things like figured out and then I try to drive it or just try to enjoy it, then uh, something else goes wrong. So I don't know, I'm gonna have to do some more troubleshooting now. Maybe it's in the tune. I haven't really done anything differently. It's kind of just been sitting. Um, it ran great the last time I fired it up, so. Who knows what the problem is now. But yeah, that's basically an update on the Frankenstein Civic. Um, I haven't been able to put a whole lot of time into working on it lately because uh, I've actually got a lot of other stuff going on. So about a year ago, I joined my church band. So I've been putting a lot of time into music practice. And then shortly after that, my brother asked me to join his rock band as well. I still want to work on cars and stuff. I just don't have the same amount of time that I used to for cars and YouTube and all that stuff. So um, I still don't mind putting out the occasional video. Um, I still head to Tim's place because we have uh, a couple projects there that we've been working on. Um, there will be videos for those cars coming out shortly, but uh, we're still putting in a bit of work there and we want to get some stuff finished up before we release any of those videos. But uh, yeah, that'll be why you haven't seen a whole lot of content from me is because I've just been basically going to work. I come home and I practice and yeah, it's been really busy. It's been a lot of fun, but uh, it definitely eats up a lot of my time. So um, that just leaves a lot less time for uh, doing car stuff. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for uh, some upcoming videos. Uh, we may not be putting out content as much as we used to, but we will still put out the occasional video Thanks again to whoever left this on my windshield. I was pretty sure uh, the duck thing was uh, a Jeep thing, but uh, somehow they must have known that I, I used to own a Jeep. So thanks again, and uh, we'll see you next time.